What's going on YouTube? Chiasno right here. So in today's video we're going to recap the current events about the iOS 12 jailbreaking and the new iPhone models. And we're going to also talk about what it should do, whether it should update, whether it should stay, now that we have a lot of information to talk about. So I'm going to start by reiterating the fact that you can check out this article here on the um, iOS internals forum that pretty much explains quite well the details about the new iPhones, the changes of course in there, and the changes in iOS 12. However, I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible, even though I talked about this in my previous video. So in the beginning, yes, the iPhone XS, XS Max and XR are not very good choices for the moment if you want the jailbreak. They are supporting the ARM V8.3, which of course comes with the ARM pointer authentication code. So the problem with that is that it pretty much destroys the possibility of ROP and JOP, which are pretty much very useful when exploiting nowadays. Return-oriented programming, or ROP, is a lot used in the industry for exploiting and so on and of course now that it's no longer possible on the new iPhone models it will definitely be a problem for the jailbreakers however iOS 12 is already out you can see here that the GM has been seated I talked about this I told you not to update this but you're going to ask me well what about the exploits that have been presented by Simon Farini by Yumang in here and also by Proteus who also got Cydia working on the iOS 12. Well, these exploits are still remaining in place and they will probably be released. At least I think Yumang will release his exploits. I'm not sure about Simon's, but of course these exploits were not created for the new iPhone models. When these exploits were developed, the IPSW for the new iPhone models did not exist, so nobody knew about the changes. And of course the Apple event took place only two days ago, while this exploit has been announced on September 7. So yes, there was absolutely nothing known about the uh, architecture that the new iPhones run at that point. So yes, even if Simon and Yumang and Proteus release their exploits, these exploits would not work on the new iPhone models, and that is of course because of the new security enhancement in the ARM V8.3, and especially the pointer authentication codes, about which you can read in here. But what if you have other devices? Devices like the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 8, 7, 6, and so on. Well, the exploits should definitely work in your case. However, there are still problems. If you take a look in here on the article, Jonathan Levin also talks about the fact that in iOS 12, fake signing is no longer a thing. I talked about this in my previous video, but of course, since this video is pretty much meant as a reiteration of this information, I'm definitely going to get into it again. The fake signing is important because every binary, including Cydia, has to be fake signed. Naturally, these are not signed by Apple or by your certificate as a developer and therefore have to be fake signed in order to run on iOS. Otherwise, a component called AMFI or Apple Mobile File Integrity would refuse to start the binary or the application and of course the application would crash, so you wouldn't be able to use your jailbreak at all. Now, the fake signing is no longer possible on iOS 12, which is of course bad news for all the devices, not only the new iPhone models. This applies to all devices running iOS 12, the latest version, so it definitely poses a new problem. Now, although iOS 12 does have kernel exploits, which positions it a lot in front of iOS 11.4.1, which doesn't have any of these, iOS 11.4.1 is definitely a better option at this point, just because it doesn't have all these security mitigations in here. So a kernel exploit would definitely appear at some point for the iOS 11.4.1, and once that appears, jailbreaks like the Electra and even my old series can be updated to support 11.4.1, quite easily. However, in the case of iOS 12, a new fix for this core trust thing has to be found, and of course that would require bypassing core trust in a way, which we do not have for the moment because nobody had to mess with core trust since now. And of course, on the new iPhone models, the 10s, 10s Max, and the 10R, you would definitely need zero day, or of course a unreleased exploit, in order to pretty much get rid of the uh, PAC or pointer authentication codes in the new ARM V8.3. 
and that's probably something nobody would release, at least not now. So stay away from these devices for the moment if you want to jailbreak. If you don't, of course, you can definitely purchase them. Anyways, yes, this is pretty much it, guys. Do not update to the iOS 12, even though it's released. A lot of you have already updated, judging by the comments on my previous video, but you can still downgrade to 11.4.1. .1. You can still do that, and I think you will be able to do that for the next weeks. This video has been brought to you by Wondershare. They're currently having a giveaway where you can pretty much win an iPhone XR. What you have to do is to go ahead here on the page, the link is in the description down below, and select the contest number 3, transfer to new iPhone, and you will have to select which iPhone do you like, the XS, XS Max, or the iPhone XR. And of course, if you select one in here, you get into their giveaway, and of course, if you're lucky, you might win an iPhone XR. Check them out in the description down below. Anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm Gio Snow. Until the next time, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. Peace out.